Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flight Deck. Today I will show you the covering of my glare shield. Now, after I have all my panels for the glare shield together, I know how much space they will need in here and how much I have to lower this upper plate of the glare shield to close this gap here over the MCP. But to work on this I have to disassemble the simulator again to move this thing over to the shop. And here the modular construction of the simulator comes in handy. I don't want to lower this whole surface in one direction because then this tip here in the front would also come lower and under the window line here and I think it is perfect where it is. So instead of this I will use this tip as a pivot point and then rotate this whole surface down here and I will see where I have to cut to make this happen. Because it would be more difficult to modify the dividers, I made new ones. Now I'm here to make a decision I knew that would come. So let's explain this in detail here. So this is a place where the EFIS panel will go later. The MCP is ending exactly here at the end of this corner. And so with a little bit uh, of gap, I will place this here. And then from the left, the glare wing is coming. And you see that there is a gap here between these two. And I think this gap is too big to be okay. I will have to close it at the end with something. And so I think I will make this glaring larger to come more over here to the EFIS panel. So maybe. I could have glued on here some pieces of wood to make this larger, but I'm not satisfied with the positioning of this hose here anymore because the glaring now is lower and so the holes are not at the place I need them. And so I think I have to make some new ones. And this time with the help of my homemade CNC router.
know when the paint has dried, I'm looking to my design and I'm not really satisfied with it. It's the same design I've made when I built this in the last time, but when I'm looking to um, Boeing glare wing uh, pictures, there is another line here, uh, which this uh, like front part here takes. And I've drawn this line here, you can see it, and I will remove a little bit more material here to build out this new shape. And I think this will look a little bit more elegant. Before I do any other steps with this glare shield cover, I will prepare a groove for a LED stripe, which will light up the MCP and the EFS panel. And I will use these stripes here. You can get these stripes on rolls and you can divide them every three LEDs into five centimeter segments. And I will place a 55 centimeter stripe here at the front of this glare shield cover in a five millimeter groove which will be placed two centimeters away from the front edge of the glare shield. I don't know if you have the same problems with your MDF, but my starts to smell when it is laying around and to prevent my cockpit from having this smell of old MDF, I found out that the smell is gone when I cover the MDF with some primer. And so I will do with these two parts here. I will cover them with a coat of primer, even if I'm covering them with leather later, just to be safe. I will make a checklist holder from an old service tray and I couldn't find any measurements for this thing here so I will eyeball this and I will place it in the middle of the glare shield here and move it so that a sheet of paper can be in here without coming over the front edge of the glare shield here. Now I will mark this here a little bit under the edge of the glare shield and then making a round corner to grab in here just freehand. What I really like about the serving tray is that the structure on the bottom, which will be the upside on the glare shield later, looks nearly like the structure of the artificial leather that I will apply. And so when the coat of lacquer is on it, it will harmonize perfectly with the clothing of the glare shield. Now I start the covering of the glare shield. You have to wait until the glue feels dry before you press the parts together. There are two LED stripes on the glare shield. 
one underneath the top of the glare shield which lights up the MCP and another one underneath the bottom of the glare shield which lights up the MIP. And to prevent the pilots from being blinded by that LED stripe, I've cut out uh, such a stripe of wood which I will cover with leather so that it harmonizes with the other parts of the glare shield. And this stripe will be in front of this LED stripe and so that the pilots can't uh, see directly into the stripe. Some hot air makes the leather more flexible to bend it around the edges. You might have seen this. When you need to cut the leather or put a clamp in it, for example, then do it on this side that you don't see and everything looks fine. So now it's time to cover the glare wings with leather and I think this will be the most difficult part. It's no problem to cover such strange edges and surfaces with leather, you have seen this in the other parts before. But here are some inner corners and I think this can be difficult to get the leather into these corners here. So this is the first time I've done something like this, so if any leather specialists are watching, please don't laugh. What I found out is that there is one direction the leather is stretchable. And you can test this by grabbing the leather and try to stretch it. And there is a little bit stretching possible in this direction, but no stretching possible in this direction here. So I think I will place the glare ring in this direction and try to bend the leather into these corners here. I will mark the outline of the surface where I have to put the glue on so that I can make part by part then.
lot of glue and four hours of working time later it is finally finished and I wouldn't have thought that it would come out so nice. There are some parts that are not looking so good. For example here in these inner corners um, I had to use some staples to hold the leather and prevent it from uh, coming back again from the walls. I knew these would be the most difficult parts of this uh, glaring, but overall it looks fine. Normally when you put leather on a chair for example then you would bring the leather over it, bring it to tension and then fix it with nails. But I'm gluing this here onto the glare sheet surface because when I would bring tension to the cloth then the glare sheet cover would possibly bend up here and it wouldn't fit anymore onto the glare shield. And so I'm just gluing it to keep the leather in place. I had to drill new holes to the outer angle irons, which I had to shorten before. I will use this 12 volt power supply, which I have left over from another project, to install it temporarily to the LED stripes just to light them up. Later there will be something installed to make them dimmable. You have to adjust the output voltage to match the voltage of your LED stripe. In my case, 12 volts. And here it is, everything on its final place. And the best of all, we have already backlighting. It's not dimmable yet. I think I will come to this when I come to the electronics of the lower panels of the MIP. Take your time when you bend the leather around all these edges and it will come out with a good result. I've updated the plans for the glass shield and you can find them for download in the member section of my website. 
And if you haven't done it already, then subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. So I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.